How's it going, guys? It is 3.59 a.m. Sunday, April 2nd. Here in Japan, we have a past level question for Durham Farm Micro, step one, step two. Before we get started, please subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate it. Give it a like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, moment underscore medical, and mehl man underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel down below. Now start the clip. 32-year-old woman, G2P1, 12 weeks gestation, comes a physician for two days. Do you have a rash in her arm? Physical exam shows no other abnormalities. And we have this rash here. So... Uh, let's just switch to the answer choices here. I'll talk about this as we go. Uh, the most appropriate treatment for this patient inhibits which of the following. Uh, choice A, 30 S chromosomal subunit, wrong fucking answer. First, immunoglycosides, tetracyclines, immunoglycosides, gentamicin, tubermicin, amikacin, target gram-negative rods. Uh, classically combined, gentamicin classically combined with vancomycin empirically for endocarditis. And uh, aminoglycosides cause acute tubular necrosis and ototoxicity. Tetracyclines treat, treat a myriad of things. Some of you say, wait, I don't get it. Doesn't doxycycline treat this patient's condition? No, it's fucking wrong. Okay. And I'll uh, discuss it more as we move through the question. Be a flagrant asshole and just save a little bit. Choice B, 50S, ribosomal sub subunit, wrong fucking answer. Okay. Refers to macrolides, linizolid, clindamycin, chlorambenicol. What are we going to do? 46 minute discussion, every little uh, drug, all their use cases, side effects, etc. It's fucking wrong. Choice C, I cap a B, degradation, wrong fucking answer, refers to mechanism of action of steroids on decreasing inflammation. What you need to know is that in the NF kappa B pathway, this is on the NBME exam, okay, and it's a repeat question for whatever reason. You need to know that I kappa B releases NF kappa B after undergoing phosphorylation. That is literally verbatim an answer on one of the NBME questions, okay? Like they'll they'll ask you in the vignette, they're like, what's the role of I kappa B with NF kappa B? And you're like, what the fuck? And the answer is literally I kappa B releases NF kappa B after undergoing phosphorylation. Now this stands for inhibitor of NF kappa B and they're bound to each other in the cytosol. So when I kappa B gets phosphorylated under a setting of inflammation due to cytokines, it releases NF kappa B, which can then go to the nucleus and upregulate more inflammation. Steroids prevent I kappa B from releasing NF kappa B. So NF kappa B can't go to the nucleus, we can't get gene transcription, we can't get more inflammation. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, P450 mediated demethylation, wrong fucking answer, refers to azoles, okay, like such as fluconazole. So very important antifungal medication. This answer choice is what we see on NBME exams and blindside students because it sounds a bit weird, okay? So for example, they'll give you uh, candidiasis, vaginal candidiasis, and they'll say it's treated orally because you can use topical nystatin as an example, but they'll say it's treated orally, you need to know it's fluconazole, and they'll say, what's the MOA of the drug? and it uh, inhibits P450-mediated demethylation. Wrong fucking answer. Choice E peptidoglycan cross-linking correct answer. This refers to ceftriaxone. Okay, now ceftriaxone inhibits cell wall synthesis, and this is Lyme disease. This is erythema chronica migrans. Past level diagnosis, spotty image here. Well, what's your factoid? OMG, normally, yes, we treat this with doxycycline, but in pregnant women and children eight or younger, we don't use doxycycline, all right? So we can use amoxicillin, we can use ceftriaxone. You don't have to freak out about amoxicillin used for more minor cases, ceftriaxone for more CNS-involved cases. What the NBME does is they give you the same fucking question here, and they have doxycycline as a wrong answer, and then they just lift ceftriaxone, and it's correct. They don't list amoxicillin, okay? So that's your high-yield banger, that we normally treat Lyme disease with doxycycline, but we, in pregnant women and children under the age of eight, we give amoxicillin or ceftriaxone. Classically, amoxicillin for less severe cases, skin findings, ceftriaxone more for CNS, but USMLE is not going to give you both. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.